In the election of November 7th, there will be challenges to incumbents in two city council districts. One of them is District 8, which includes the Back Bay, Beacon Hill, and the West End, along with most of the Fenway and Mission Hill. In tonight's pre-election segment, we talk with the incumbent running for re-election, Josh Zakin. Thank you very much for being with us, Councillor. Thanks for having me. Yes, one thing you're associated with that we're hearing more about than maybe even you expected this year, and, and that's the Trust Act. Talk about yeah. your work on that. Sure. It was one of the... Uh, Really proud uh, moments for me in my first term on the City Council in 2014. Uh, we wrote and ultimately passed, and the mayor signed uh, the Boston Trust Act, which prohibits the Boston police from holding people based on their uh, immigration status. And that's something that we put into place working with um, ACLU, Central Presente, uh, many of the local uh, unions um, to make sure that folks felt safe uh, in the city of Boston. And if you're a victim or witness to crime, you can feel free to interact with the Boston Police Department without fear of your immigration status uh, being an issue. And obviously, um, the so-called sanctuary cities um, and you know immigration issues have become much uh, more top of mind since the presidential elections of last year. But I'm very proud that Boston was sort of leading the way, and I'm hopeful that Massachusetts uh, and other communities around the country will follow suit to make sure that people uh, know that they once they're they're here. They're part of our community, and they deserve the protection and the, and the freedom to call the police when they need to. Why did you decide to carry the ball in this? Mm -hmm. I, I know there are parts of the city, like, like East Boston, for example, yeah. you could think that would be more of an issue, yeah. but, but, but you, you did well, this. I, I was chair of the Civil Rights Committee uh, at the time, as I am now, so certainly um, you know, issues like this are always, I think, at the forefront of my mind, and I think my constituents uh, responded very positively to that as well. And It's, a, it's not an issue of uh, immigration per se. It's an issue of the folks who are here in our community and you know riding the bus with us walking on the street next to us their children are in school with us and you know until the federal government uh, figures out a way to get their act together and set up some sort of system for normalizing immigration status for you know bringing people here who are here um, to letting them get some sort of documentation these people are here we have tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of people in Massachusetts and it makes us all safer and I think better as a society if folks know that they can Call the police uh, if they witness a crime or a victim. Uh, you know, victims of domestic violence and sexual assault in particular uh, were afraid to come forward. And you know, unfortunately, with uh, the President Trump's immigration policies, people are going back, you know, underground and being afraid to report and being afraid to participate. But certainly, um, you know, I'm proud to say the Boston Police Department does not participate uh, in those immigration enforcement actions. They won't hold people based on their immigration status. There has been a bill at the state house to increase those protections statewide. Uh, the Supreme Judicial Court just uh, made a ruling a couple months ago that uh, put some severe limitations on what any law enforcement agency in Massachusetts can do. But we've had it here in Boston since 2014, and we continue, I think, to be a safe and welcoming place for everyone. This has not been a, a great year for voter engagement, but, but this is an issue you've been working <laughs> sure. on. So talk, talk about what you've been doing with sure, that. Sure, well, you know, you know, we had a preliminary election uh, just a few weeks ago in the city of Boston, and citywide turnout was just under 15%. Um, in our district, it was even lower than that. And, you know, it's a combination of factors. I think people are busy. There might be a little bit of fatigue after the uh, presidential election and one that went the way a lot of us in Boston, at least, did not want it to go. But, you know, people need to, I think, participate in doing what we can to make it easier uh, for folks who do want to vote is important. So in the uh, Special Committee on Civil Rights, which I chair, we had a hearing a few weeks ago, actually, uh, at Boston University. And we uh, brought in folks from the transportation department, the school, Boston Public Schools, um, the library, um, and other uh, city departments where people have routine interactions uh, with the city. You know, when you get your resident permit parking sticker, you have to, as I'm sure you know, very intensive documentation that you present. And there's really not much more that would be needed to say, okay, and here I'm eligible to vote as well. Let me register while I'm doing this. Similarly, in Boston Public Schools, when parents are engaging with our BPS uh, enrollment and engagement centers, that's another opportunity and also making sure that our students who are 17, 16, 17, 18 um, are able to register to vote. Massachusetts has pre-registration, so even if you're not 18 at the time, if you will be by the next election, you can register. So making sure that our guidance counselors and other uh, personnel in school are trained on that and are able to help kids do that and making sure that the students, uh, who certainly have a stake, I think, in our local elections, but obviously in all the elections, uh, have an opportunity to vote, um, whether that means getting you know, community service credit, whether that means it's, a, it's an excuse 
uh, a valid excuse. You know, if you went and voted that day, you got your sticker um, to come in a little late because it's, it's tough for our high school kids to do it. Um, and looking uh, statewide uh, at pushing for same-day voter registration, New Hampshire has it, Wisconsin's had it for decades. I mean, we are kind of far behind on making it easier to vote, and I think we need to do everything we can to obviously make sure we have safe and secure elections. But if someone's uh, eligible to vote, we should, be, uh, we should not be putting barriers up. This has been a news. We're talking with Josh Sikam, candidate for re-election as city councilor in District 8. Uh, councilor, you were with the majority in council in increasing tenant protections, but if you look at right within the district, uh, what would you say about advancing uh, access to affordable housing yeah. that you've been involved in? Yeah, so I, I chair the uh, Committee on Housing and Community Development on the city council, and it's a challenge uh, right now, I'll be honest with you, uh, especially in light of proposed cuts. Uh, from Washington. We get a lot of our funding for the creation and preservation of affordable housing uh, in the form of federal pass-through grants and right now we're, we're treading water. Um, you know the city passed the Community Preservation Act in 2016 which uh, should generate significant new funds for affordable housing creation and preservation but we have to get creative. Um, you know we have the Beverly building that's in the West End. Uh, they just had the, or they just um, had the lottery for it. 240 units almost all income restricted, deed restricted affordable housing. 6,000 people applied, uh, you know, for 240 units. The Globe did a big story on it. Um, it's the kind of development we want to see, but the number of applications just shows, shows the need to have these, you know, downtown transit oriented development. And that only came about because we had a good partnership with the state that owned the land, a for profit developer who needed to make a contribution to the city's affordable housing fund, um, and the city. Uh, coming together to make this happen and those are the kind of projects we're trying to figure out how to do and leverage our limited resources, limited public resources to create more. We also recently uh, in the Fenway, uh, the Fenway Community Development Corporation was able to purchase uh, Burbank Gardens Apartments which is over 50 units of affordable housing that was set to go on the open market. Um, the Fenway CDC were able to put together some funding sources. I was proud as a member of the Neighborhood Housing Trust to vote to approve a million dollar grant from the city to help bridge that gap, but uh, those are the kind of things we need to do because, as anyone knows, uh, Boston, downtown in particular, rents are rising, and if we're going to create uh, and keep diversity in our neighborhoods, that has to include housing. In many parts of the city now, there's increasing anxiety about uh, permanent housing units mm -hmm. of whatever price level being displaced by the more profitable short-term rentals. Yeah. Uh, what should be done about yeah. that? That's a, certainly a real concern. You know, you hear we hear the uh, the terrible stories of folks who say, you know. Someone buys a building, you know, in East Boston, so say, and uh, they send eviction notices to everyone. They convert it uh, to short-term rentals. And uh, similarly, we've been hearing about that in Chinatown, and it's happening all over. But those are some of the more prominent examples. And in my mind, if a building's going to function as a hotel, then it's a hotel. And hotels need proper zoning. They have inspections. They have regulations. They have taxes uh, that are different than uh, an apartment unit. And so we need to have that authority. I know our representative Michael Witz. Um, is pushing a bill at the state house that I think is going to do a really good job of giving cities and towns like Boston the framework so that we can, through zoning, through our inspectional services department, make sure that um, there's appropriate regulation here to make sure that neighbors are notified and are aware if you know, another unit in their building has now become a short-term rental. There are going to be strangers in the hallway. What are we doing about security? What are we doing about trash disposal? In Beacon Hill, um, I'm not gonna, I'll use Airbnb. Um, you know, generically, um, I don't want to just single them out. There they're are many not services, the only ones. Yeah. Um, but for Airbnb units, um, you know, trash disposal is an issue. Someone's there for a couple nights; they don't know when or where to put the trash out, and obviously, um, that's a problem. And we want to make sure that people are educated and that there is appropriate enforcement. And I think having some sort of limitation on the number of units um, it would be appropriate. But we need to see, I think, what the state uh, is going to authorize the city of Boston to do, and then we're going to put our resources into place. And I think zoning. Uh, in particular, and enforcement of the zoning code uh, is going to go a long way towards that. This district has some of the worst traffic safety issues mm -hmm. in the city. Uh, what would you say about your response mm -hmm. to that in the past couple of years? Well, I think we've been working a lot with uh, both community groups, um, you know, Neighborhood Association of Back Bay uh, in particular, and the Fenway Civic Association, just on two of our toughest areas down Mass Ave um, and Beacon Street and Back Bay, where we've had some pretty terrible incidents over the years um, of pedestrians and cyclists uh, being injured. And we've worked with uh, the transportation department, the Vision Zero program, to first add protected bike lanes, uh, most of the length of Mass Ave, certainly all the parts of it that are in my district at this point. It goes further into the south end. Um, and right now we're going to begin work on Beacon Street. Um, that's going to 
reduce the traffic by one lane, so that should calm the traffic, but also create protected bike lanes um, to make it safer for pedestrians and cyclists. So we're doing it. You know, our city, I think, has old infrastructure. Um, now, Beacon Street is wide enough, uh, it was three lanes of travel before, that we can do that. Um, what's really, I think, tough is on our smaller streets, trying to adapt and improve the infrastructure, you know, uh, to make it safer for everyone. I think old, sorry. No, I, I, I want to ask you about one other yeah. traffic issue here, and this is about resident parking. Uh, Councilor Wu, I understand, is trying to explore the possibility of charging people mm. for permits. Do you think it, maybe in some way that ought to be done? I think looking at our use, um, I know it was uh, a couple of years ago, I remember reading about there was one family that had nine, uh, I believe, parking permits for one dress. Uh, putting some sort of limit on the number per household, I think, is reasonable. Um, you know, if or how there should be a fee imposed, I think, is you know, an important conversation to have. Um, but, you know, if we're going to tell people we don't want you driving in the city or, you know, we want to make it more multimodal, we have to make sure we're supporting the T. Um, we have to make sure that if someone doesn't have their car or chooses not to have it, they have safe, reliable ways to get around. So, um, you know, I think certainly the city's been as supportive as we can uh, of the MBTA, but we really need, I think, the governor um, and the state to put enough funding in there to make it reliable. I would love to be able to get around the district on the train or on the bus um, instead of having to drive a car and park and you know run around and get stuck in traffic but at this point in time you know it's we're not at the place right now with our transit system where, where it's there so we really need to focus on that thank you very much for being with us thanks for having me candidate for re-election to city council in district 8 josh zakem in a moment we'll tell you what candidates for mayor think about the arts but first this message